I have done it. I completely hit the jackpot. Look at me. Fully enchanted OP diamond armor. Look at all those enchants on there. Not only that, but look at this diamond sword, diamond axe, diamond pick, diamond shovel, and a bow with all amazing enchants. Look at that. What, what a powerhouse I am, right? Absolute menace to this world. And that's not all, because I also have all of these fully enchanted diamond picks, axes, diamond hoes, and shovels. And it's what I've been mainly looking forward to for such a long time. It's It's been a massive goal of mine simply to get to the point of being able to get OP tools, OP armor, and be completely overpowered, free from any concern, and that any task I can perform, I can perform at my highest ability because I now have the tools to be able to do it, right? Especially when it comes to getting good enchants on my picks, because if originally I just had an efficiency 2 diamond pick, which, <laughs> let's be honest, if you're mining out huge areas like this, for instance, which was at my nether wall farm, there's no way I want to do that <laughs> again with an, with an efficiency 2 diamond pick. No way. It's just not something I'm really comfortable doing. But now I have an efficiency 5 diamond pick with unbreaking 3 mending and silk touch meaning it's never going to break as long as I keep an eye on it and things are going to go so much smoother and quicker it's just going to be more efficient now I suppose hence why it's called efficiency 5 right and any sort of space in the future is now going to be an ease basically the world is my oyster or the world is my block should I say it's just going to be so much less painful for me and that's something that I'm a big believer in trying to play the game with as little pain as possible right you want to make things as convenient and as friendly on your time within the world as possible. And the thing is, since last episode, we have access to every single enchantment we could possibly ever want. Everything from mending to efficiency five, to protection four, to loyalty, infinity, and beyond. You know, we have literally everything and anything. We are now in that position to become fully OP, right? Which is what I wanted. And so I started off with gathering all the things I wanted to enchant. So that included the armor that I had on, the pickaxes which i didn't want to include all 30 to 40 pickaxes because that was going to take a long time and it'd be a bit overkill right i mean in the future i probably will do don't get me wrong but for the time being doing that for the time being i felt nine pickaxes would be a good start to get fully enchanted shovels i chose like four or five of them axes i chose three of them and diamond hose i chose two of them because i thought i put one with fortune three on two and one with silk touch not to mention i also wanted a bow an overpowered bow with infinity because i i personally prefer infinity bows over mending bows that's just a personal preference that i know some of you disagree with and some of you agree with the ones who agree with me you're the real ogs you know <laughs> um the sword i really wanted an over overpowered sword and i always seem to manage to mess up the order of enchantment on my sword so that's something i didn't actually do this time so the strategy was simple rather than buy all of the books at once which is what i usually do i just chose to enchant a few things at a time going through the village buying all the enchants for those few items that I needed rather than like I said buying all the enchants for everything so for instance I started with my armor and I decided to put my helmet my chest piece my diamond leggings and my boots into four different slots within the inventory of course and then next to each of them I put the enchanted books I wanted to put onto each of those pieces next to them so for instance I'll give you an example my chest piece I wanted thorns three mending unbreaking three and protection on you know that sort of example and so it did take a lot of money and a lot of books to just buy these enchants but that didn't matter because we have access to a load of money and technically like i've said in multiple episodes now infinite money because of our string duper i had a lot of levels to begin with like a lot of levels we had like a hundred i can't even remember how many uh, definitely more than a hundred levels to play with and i wasn't sure how long they were gonna last but really it didn't they didn't last any time at all they depleted quicker than my wallet on payday like they disappeared they went under i was gonna say the levels went into the negative numbers but I guess if your levels could go into the negative numbers that would be the point in having levels to begin with. So after my armor I went with the tools working through them one at a time my bow my sword my shovels you know or my axes you know you get the idea. Now the thing with enchanting is you need anvils you can't just do it on a whim right you need the anvils to be able to combine books or to be able to put those enchants onto each of your tools right you can't just magically grab those enchants from the librarians and hope they appear on your tools. Now the unfortunate thing about anvils is they're expensive, uh, mostly early game. Like later on when you have access to a lot of iron, it doesn't matter as much because you've become established within the world and you're rich, right? But we're not at that stage. 
Mentally rich, yes. Physically rich, no. Now, I had two anvils to begin with, and then I went on to make a third anvil at some point, and I thought, you know what, this might be enough. Or, if it's not, maybe I'd only have to get maybe another anvil. However, I, I went through those anvils pretty quickly, and it got to a point when I thought, okay, I don't have the iron for this. In fact, it didn't get to a point when I thought that. It got to a point where I knew that I didn't have the anvil. I didn't have the iron to make any more anvils, and so I was left with a decision. I could either stay and kill iron golems that spawned within the village breeder but then I had to wait for them to spawn and blah de blah de blah it was going to be a bit of a waiting game and I didn't really have the patience so instead I thought you know what why don't I take myself to the iron rather than trying to take the iron to me and so I thought I'd go mine it. I haven't been for an iron mining session for a few episodes now and now I have fully enchanted diamond pick albeit it was depleted of all durability and that's just one of those things and so I thought you know what why don't I repair it first which is what I did I went <laughs> I used the villagers as an XP farm. I traded with them, had my pickaxe in one of my hands, made sure that all XP went to that pickaxe so it was getting a load of XP for repairing it. Surprisingly it actually repaired itself pretty easily and quickly. It was It's kind of shocking how much XP the villagers actually get. They are a great source of XP. But once I had a fully enchanted pick which was back to full durability I thought you know what I can take myself mining now and so that's what I did. I just spent a lot of time mining for iron. I went up to a higher level I think like negative 20 or I, I think I'm just guessing but I, I took myself up to a higher level and I just decided to strip mine which is what I did before except now I had a better pick and instantly I noticed the difference like I was carving through the, the underground like butter seriously I was I was loving life and when a task like mining becomes so simple and effortless because of you got great tools it becomes a joy it really does and that's that's what I was after that's what I've always been after with OP tools it's not so I can become supremely powerful within this world that's just a bonus right it's just so we can make our life easier by it being able to to do things like mining for instance on a much more efficient scale and I enjoyed it a lot actually it was very therapeutic I've said this on previous episodes of other series like my hardcore series like I've, I enjoyed mining huge amounts of blocks when we have tools and resources to do it right but it's just all you've got to do is just focus on pretty much nothing allow your mind to go blank and just mine and mine and mine and it's you just feel your mind emptying it's almost like a form of meditation for me at this point and I purposely actually repaired my my pick with silk touch because I thought you know what not only can we mine iron but I've now got access to silk touch so if I silk touch this iron I can bring it back to the base after I've done place all of that iron out and use a fortune 3 pick to get two or three times that amount of iron and then slap that into the furnace and you know what I did I forgot to do all of that and I just put the ore blocks straight into the furnace and looking back on that I cringe to myself because I just look at it and I think that's such a missed opportunity I've got to go two or three times that amount I basically cut my pay in half is what I did basically decided to blue ball myself I don't know why I did this I kneecapped myself I could have been getting so much more I could have I could have got two or three times the amount of iron that we did and we had a lot of iron just from that one mining session I ruined it for myself but it didn't really matter because as long as I had the iron to make more anvils that's all that matters and I did I actually went a little bit overkill I I made another six anvils I don't know what was going through my mind I thought you know what I'm just gonna make six anvils because I probably need them and I didn't I didn't break a single one after that but you know what in the future we are going to do a lot of enchanting so I'm going to have to make anvils in the future so I thought you know what why not and we still have like more than a stack of iron left over and I'm sure I can go on another iron mining session to get a load of stuff and one thing I did actually find when I was mining iron is I managed to get a look at the scale of the cave or I managed to appreciate the scale of the huge cave we found near our base or where we've been growing our large trees I mean that large cave a portion of it is now part of our base right because our nether wart farm should cane farm and wheat farm is now encompassed within that now that we've carved out a huge space and connected it to that large space right that huge cave is basically an extension of our base at this point and i found that mining out at a higher level for iron we're talking like 80 blocks higher than where we are down at the bottom of the earth and i was actually coming out into portions of that cave and i just thought wow this is a huge cave and it just goes to show the extent how large that cave system is and i was still lighting up areas and there's still so much of that area and that space 
place that I didn't light up that I know I'm going to have to get to at some point. It sort of feels like a Zelda dungeon in a way. You explore a piece of it at the start and then you find actually this is much larger than you thought and then you explore another area and another area and then you find ah you come out in another area that is also part of the first area but you just didn't realize but now that you've explored it you can see that it's all connected. So anyway now that they had the anvils crafted I had the iron to do that I went back to enchanting and my strategy for enchanting was pretty simple because it was costing a lot of levels what I would do is I would put all of the lower level enchants onto each of the tools first then the next most expensive enchant onto the tools then the next most expensive leading all the way up from least expensive to the most expensive and I think overall that is less expensive and more cost efficient right doing it that way not to mention your chances of getting the too expensive mechanic which I'm pretty sure everyone knows at this point I hate is much less probable right because you're putting the enchants in the order they should be put on it costs less for you in the long run not only that I thought you know what if I enchant as I go and then level up that's a quicker way of getting levels because because we know how level mechanics work right as you know when you're at a lower level the amount of XP needed to level you up to the next level is much less as when you're at a higher level you're right when you're at level one it's going to take you much less experience points to get you to level two than it would if you were at level 100 trying to get to level 101 right that's just how game mechanics work in most cases and so what I would do is rather than leveling and leveling and leveling and trying to get to a really high number and then put an enchant on in one large go what I thought I'd do instead was only level up the uh, amount of levels needed for that enchant so for instance if I needed 12 levels for an enchant to be put onto a tool I would level up like 12 levels with my fletchers by trading string and put that enchant onto the tool then go back and level some more like I said it's so much quicker leveling up at lower levels than it is once you start to get higher level and so it was a cycle and it was a bit grindy at times but it didn't really matter because I knew at the end of it I was going to be getting some amazing tools and then once I'd enchanted everything I felt good but the, the only issue was that most of them were broke right or its durability were teetering on the edge of collapse especially my picks which I'd been using to mine and I'd left at like one durability so they were one point away from breaking right they were on the breaking point they were on the precipice of defeat so what I did is I decided to take them and every other bit of gear that I had fully enchanted and use trading once again as an XP farm to repair, to repair those bad boys and bring them back to full health and not to mention I managed to get a lot of money from this you know this whole process wasn't actually it wasn't in the cards for me to get a lot of money during this process but it just seemed to happen and I seem to have come out even richer than when I began which I'm not going to complain about and now I've almost completed my goal of getting fully enchanted OP gear or just getting OP I should just say OP gear I don't know why I need to say enchanted fully enchanted OP gear because everyone knows that OP gear includes being fully enchanted but the next and final step is turning all this diamond OP gear into netherite OP gear and then that's finally that task crossed off the list we can get on with some other cool stuff but of course this episode isn't completely done because I wanted to check out what it was like to mine deep slate afterwards right we'd fully enchanted our tools and I've been mining deep slate for the majority of my time here underground I thought you know what I want to experience what it feels like with an efficiency 5 diamond pick mining out this block that has caused me so much hassle so that's what I did I put it to the test started mining and pretty much immediately found some diamonds which if that's not a good omen I don't know what is right I think that speaks volumes but those are the stars aligning they are telling me the universe is telling me that you were meant to get a fully enchanted efficiency 5 diamond pick to mine the deep slate that's what I think it was telling me and just from mining that deep slate I can notice a big difference in my bead I mean it is palpable and I enjoyed every second of it even though it was just a short mining session of mining deep slate I enjoyed oh I enjoyed it because I thought of all the future tasks where this is going to come in handy and I'm going to be able to put this to the test in more than one serious way and then of course the diamonds I thought you know what this is a silk touch pickaxe why don't I just mine those diamonds and not only these diamonds but the other diamonds that I'd left with episodes ago but why not mine them I have silk touch all I'm going to be doing is collecting them as ore blocks and then I can mine them if I want to at any time I choose with a fortune three pick get two or three times that amount of course we have diamonds in just regular diamond form in some of my chests back at base and I thought you know what I don't need to mine these ore blocks with a fortune three pick I can just store these for later and when I need the diamonds I can do it if not I have the ore blocks there waiting in the wings but of course like every other episode I will just quickly go through the statistics so as we can see deep slate is still the most mind block 72,000 stone picks 23 I've broke as the most times broke I've broken anything 
times crafted emeralds now at 43,122 that is running away with the lead there notably emerald blocks are now in fifth place at two and a half thousand they've overtaken torches it also says times crafted if you look down a couple we've got glass at 912 now i've never actually crafted glass but i think that's because i've bought this glass from the traders it's counting that as times crafted so yeah i have bought been buying some glass from the traders mostly as xp but also because it feels really good to have glass in my inventory and put it away in my chest so I don't know <laughs> I haven't actually used any of it but it's just nice to have times used uh, diamond pick is now up to 85,761 picked up yep Bubble deep slate is still reigning champ in that regard at 70,176 and finally dropped 6,172 for string red you'll notice is now 4.7k that might have been the same as last episode I can't remember but yeah we have some uh, we have some big numbers in here now if we go to the direct the general sort of stuff we can see that traded with villagers is now at 30 32 and a half thousand 32 and a half thousand are you kidding me that is some serious numbers that is almost it for this episode and there is one more thing i wanted to show you and that's what this place looks like with shaders i mean it looks pretty damn cool doesn't it i mean yeah this looks freaking cool especially when you go into one of these buildings i mean look at this whoa it just looks very atmospheric there's all the librarians they're loving life they wouldn't have this any other way they absolutely love it and you know what i wouldn't have it any other way i don't think you would have it any other way either i mean look at this maybe i should play with shaders on more often much more atmospheric the only problem is uh it's harder to see right i mean if i go up to this large cave i mean the visibility is absolutely awful look at that you can't see anything in those dark patches of the cave i mean albeit there are the dark patches of the cave but you can't really see the tops of the trees either but that lava is wow that's bright however if you have enough light it does look nice okay, there's my farms from before yeah so i just wanted to show what it looks like with shaders on and then we're back to normal without the shaders and now i can actually see again it makes a big difference anyway that's it for this episode all right bye